Hello everyone, welcome to this follow-along episode of Sudoku. This episode focuses on beginner strategies, so let's go ahead and solve another easy level Sudoku puzzle together. Here we have another episode of New York Times Puzzle. Let's begin with looking at the horizontal blocks. Okay, so let's start with the number one. The number one in this top rank is repeated two times. We have a number one here in the top row and a number one here in the bottom row. So there has to be a number one in the middle row and it has to be in this block. It can't be in this cell because there's a one here. So it must go in this cell. Number two, no number two. Three, only one time. Four, four we have three fours. Five, number five appears twice. So we have one in this block, bottom row, this block, top row. So there has to be one in this block, middle row, and so it must go here. Number six was repeated twice. So we have number six in this block, middle row, bottom row. Therefore, it must be in the top row of this block, and it can't be in this cell because there is already a six in this column, so it must go here. Number seven is repeated twice, seven seven so there has to be a seven here okay should I go through that again seven in this block seven in this block means there must be a seven in this block bottom row middle row so it has to be in the top row eight there are no eights nine there's one number nine okay so we're finished with the top rank we've gone through the numbers one through nine now let's go to the middle rank one is repeated three times two is only one time, the number three is repeated three times, the number four is repeated twice. So here we have the number four in this block and the number four in this block. So there has to be a number four in this block and it can't go in the bottom row because we already have a four in the bottom. It can't go in the top row for two reasons. First there's a four and second there are no empty cells. So it must go either here or here it cannot go in this cell because there's a 4 in this column, so it must go in this cell. Number 5 is only repeated one time. Number 6, there's no number 6. Number 7, once, 8 once, 9 once. So we've now gone through the numbers 1 through 9 in the middle rank, and now we're ready to go through the numbers 1 through 9 in the bottom rank. 1, no, 2, 3, Four. Okay, so the number four is repeated twice, so that's perfect. Number four is once in this block, once in this block, so there has to be a four in this block. It must be in the bottom row because we have the top row and the middle row already have a number four in it. This bottom row doesn't have a number four, so it has to be in the bottom row either here or here. This cell can be eliminated because there's a four already in this column. So this is the only place the number four can go. Number five, we have two number fives. There's one in this block and there's one in this block. So there has to be one in this block. There's one in the top row. There's one in the bottom row. So there must be one in the middle row. This cell can be eliminated because there's a five already in this column. So it must go in this cell here. Number six appears three times. Number seven, only one time. Number eight. Number eight appears here one time, here the second time, so we need a number eight in this block. It already appears in this row, the top row. It already appears here in the middle row, therefore it must go here in the bottom row. There's only one cell remaining, and that's where it goes. Okay, so at this point we have gone through the ranks horizontally, the top rank, the middle rank, the bottom rank. Now we're ready to work in the same way vertically, and these are called stacks. We have the left stack, the center stack, and the right stack. So let's start with the left stack. And we're going to work the same way we did horizontally, except instead of looking across the rows, we're looking down each column. So number one appears already three times. Number two doesn't appear. Number three, we have two number threes, one here on the left and one here in the center. So there has to be a number three in this right column, right? There's a 3 in this block and a 3 in this block. So the number 3 must be in this block and it must be in the right column. It can't be in this cell because there's already a 3 in this row, so it has to go here. Okay, number 4 is already done. Number 5 
is already done. Number six appears twice, once on the left and once on the right, so there has to be a, a number six in the center column. And in which block? In this block, because this block doesn't have a number six. So it can go either here or here. And this time I can't eliminate it because there are no sixes in either of these rows. So I'm going to switch to candidate mode and put the number six as a candidate in this cell and the number six as a candidate in this cell. Okay, number seven appears twice, once on the left, once on the right. So there has to be a number seven here in the center. And now I know it can't be in this cell, right, because there's a seven in this row. So it must go in this cell. And I'm going to put it there in a second, but watch what happens. When I put the seven there, that means the six can't go there. So therefore, this cell must be the number six. Put this in fill mode, and now I know the number seven has to go here. And since the number seven goes here, the only place left for the number six is this cell. Okay, so now we've solved six and we solved seven. What about the number eight? The number eight appears twice here on the left, here on in the right. So it must go in the center in this block, and the only place in the center in this block is this cell here. And finally, number nine only appears one time in this vertical stack. So we are done with the left stack. Let's move on to the center stack here. Okay, and, and work vertically again, starting with the number one. One appears twice on the left in the center, so there has to be a one in this right column. And in which block? Well, there's already a one in this block. There's already a one in this block. So the number one must be in this block, and it must be in this column. So the only place it can go is right here. Number two doesn't appear. Number three appears twice, once in this block in the middle, or center, once in this block on the right. So now we have to have a three on the left here, because this left column does not have a number three. And the only place in this block on the left is this cell right here. Number four is already solved. Number five, we have a five up here and a five down here. That means there must be a five in the middle, right? And that 5 can either go here or here. It can't go in this cell because there's a 5 already in this row. So the number 5 must go here. All right, number 6. Number 6 we have here in this block on the left, this block in the center. Therefore, there must be a 6 in this block on the right. Number 7, here, here and therefore it must go either here or here. Now it can't go in this cell because there's already a seven in this bottom row, right? So the only place the number seven can go is in this cell. So now we have the number seven on the left, number seven in the center, number seven on the right. This block has a seven, this block has a seven, and now we just place this block, the number seven. All right. Number eight, number eight only appears once. Number nine, number nine only appears once, and so now we're done with this vertical stack. Moving on to the right stack, we have the number one. So number one appears twice, here in this block in the center, here in this block on the left, so therefore we must have a number one in this right column. It has to go in this block, and there are only two cells remaining this cell and this cell. Now this cell can be eliminated because there's already a one in this row. Therefore the number one can only go in that cell. Number two only appears once. Three appears once. Four appears once. Five. Oh, I'm sorry. Four appears three times. So four is already taken care of. Five. Five appears twice, right? Here on the right. Here on the left. Therefore we need a five in the center here. It can't go in this cell because there's already a five in this row. So the only place left for the number five is right here. Then we have number six. Number six appears here in the top block. Number six appears on the left here in this block and on the right here in this block. Therefore there must be a number six here in the center and there's only one cell remaining so it has to go there. Number seven only appears once, number eight only appears once, 
and number 9 doesn't appear. So now we're done scanning the horizontal blocks and the vertical blocks for all the numbers 1 through 9. Now there's a number of approaches we can take. One of the th first things you want to do is to look through the rows and columns and see if there's any block, row, or column that has just one cell left. And actually there's a block here that has just one cell remaining. So then we can use the counting method to fill that in. We simply count. One, two, there we go. Number two is missing. Let's see if there's any other row, column, or block that has just one cell remaining. And we can see over here this row has just one cell remaining, and this is the cell. And using the counting method, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine is the number that's missing, so we can fill that in. Is there any other row that has just one number missing? No. Is there any other column that has just one number missing? Let's see. This column has one number missing right here. See this column? So, one, two. The number two is missing, right? So we can place the number two there. This column is also missing just one number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's the number nine. And actually the block is only missing that one cell. So you could have counted that way also. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There we go. And now looking across, this row only has one cell remaining. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The number seven is missing. Okay, are there any other rows or columns that just have one number remaining? Let's see, we have this column, this column. Let's go through the columns. No, I don't see any columns that have just one cell remaining. Let's go across the rows. I don't see any rows that have one column remaining. And let's look through the blocks, and I don't see any blocks that have just one cell remaining. So, we can approach this in a few different ways. One way is to go back scanning the horizontal, because now that we filled in numbers, we can fill in the other numbers. Or, we can try to put in candidates and try to eliminate those candidates. And either of those are, are perfectly fine methods for a beginner strategy. Let's go back to scanning the horizontal blocks. The number three now, we have two threes. So we can look for the third three. So there's a three in the top row and a three in the bottom row. So there must be a three here in the middle, and it would go there. Number four is already filled in. Number five is already filled in. Number six is already filled in. Number seven is filled in. Number eight, let's see, there's still just one number eight. Number nine, we have a nine here in this block and a nine here in this block. So therefore, there must be a nine in this block. Bottom, middle, so therefore it has to be in the top row and there's only one cell remaining. So now we have the number nine taken care of. Now by doing that, we can see that this column now has just one cell remaining and we can fill that in. One, two, it's the number two. And now once we fill that in, we see this block has just one cell remaining, and actually this row has just one cell remaining. So we can fill that in by counting. Let's do it by the block. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's the number eight. Now we can move down here to the next horizontal group of blocks, the middle rank, and we can see we have the one filled in three times. The number two only appears one time. The number three appears three times. The number four is done. The number five is done. The number six is done. Number seven. Number seven appears here at the bottom and here at the top. Therefore, there must be a number seven here in the middle. And it can't be in this cell because there is a seven in this column. Therefore, the seven must go here. So now we've taken care of the number seven. Eight and nine only appear once, so we can't do anything about that. So let's move to the bottom rank. One is done. Two, okay, that number two doesn't appear too much in this puzzle, so we can't do anything with the two. Number three, we can move on to the number three. We have a three in the bottom row, a three in the top row. Therefore, there must be a three here in this middle row, and there are three cells, right? But we can right away eliminate this cell, because there's a three in this column. We can eliminate this cell, because there's a three in this column. Therefore, the number three must go in this cell. 
Okay, four, five, and six are taken care of, seven is taken care of, eight is taken care of, and nine only appears once. So that's all we can do horizontally. Now we can either go ahead and work vertically again, or look and see are there any more columns or rows or blocks that have just one cell remaining. Okay, here I see this column here has just one cell remaining, this column. So I can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's the number nine. So the number nine is missing here. And then this block is missing just one number. So we can count one, two. It's the number two. And now this column is missing a number up here. So we can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's the number eight. And now we can fill in this block. One, two, it's the number two, right? And now this entire top rank is done. So now we have most of the puzzle filled in. It should be a very simple matter to eliminate numbers. We can start, for example, with this block. And we say, okay, we have two cells remaining, right? What numbers, what two numbers are still left? And then we can look to see if it can be placed in one cell or the other cell. So what's left is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So the numbers 8 and 9 are missing from this block, and there are two cells left. So one of these cells is an 8, and one of these cells is a 9. And if I look across here, I see there's an 8 in this row. So this cell can't be the number 8, right? So the 8 has to go here, and therefore the 9 has to be in this cell. And now I can look across and I see I have just one cell remaining. One, two, it's the number two. There we go. And now there's just one cell remaining in this block. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's the number eight. And now there's just one cell in this row, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's the number nine. And now there's just one cell remaining in this block. One, two, it's the number two. Now we're done with this entire stack. We're done with the top two ranks. And all we have left is this block here and these two cells. And so we can just use the counting method, or we can look in the block and see what's left. One, two, right? The number two is missing. Well, it can't be this cell because there's a two here, right? So the number two must go in this cell. And then what's left is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It's the number 9. And there we go. We've solved today's easy puzzle. Congratulations. I hope you enjoyed that. Come back again to follow along with the next easy puzzle. And thank you for watching.